All right, what's going on guys? Today we're out here on a small little local lake fishing around and we're in my 1986 Alumacraft Bandit. So <clears throat> kind of this made me think about, and Miss Hunter's out here with me, we kind of got to talking and the only electronics on this boat are nav lights, a live well aerator, and a 45 pound thrust motor guy trolling motor. So that's literally all that's on this boat and we've still been catching fish relatively well. The difference is it kind of limits uh, like what percentage of the lake you can actually fish efficiently. So we're going to break into and kind of break down what kind of advantages kind of electronics give you and how much more efficient it can make you and frankly are they a good investment because right now electronics cost a ridiculous amount. People are putting $20,000 worth of electronics on a boat and more power to you. If you can afford that, I'm fine with that. It doesn't bother me at all. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. I personally think it's more fun to kind of fish like this. You know, I got two jigs on the front deck and I'm going to, you know, go around and flip anything I can find and swim one past anything I can find and I'm going to get some bites. The deal is I cannot be nearly as efficient fishing offshore in this boat as I can in my boat because I have two or three graphs sometimes on the front deck of my boat. And what that does is whenever I pull up offshore, I know exactly where I'm at in relation to my waypoint because obviously everybody now has GPS mapping on the front of their boat. I can pull up exactly on top of my waypoint and if my waypoint is not exactly on the piece of structure that I'm fishing, I have a forward facing sonar that's 3D that I can kind of scan out and I can see everything around me and I have forward facing sonar that I can scan. And what that does is it allows me to pull up to whatever kind of structure I'm fishing and make a pinpoint precise cast on the very first cast. So I can pull up to a brush pile and I can hit it first cast. I can pull up to fish and I can pretty much hit it first cast. And one thing I can do is if I'm looking at the stump or the structure or whatever I'm doing, I can cast out there and I can see my bait fall. And I know that if my bait fell close to the stump or the structure or whatever it is, or if I actually missed it and I don't ever see my bait on the screen. Now, everybody doesn't need that. For some people, you're gonna have a lot of river systems around you. You might have like in South Louisiana or something like that where all you do is fish cypress trees in the bank. You got tidal fisheries and stuff like that. You may not need the forward facing sonar. You might not need it ever if you're not gonna travel long distances and fish or stuff like that. So for you, maybe the only investment you would need to make is in a good GPS for the, for the console and a good GPS for the bow, where you can have good mapping for both, you know, for everything that you're running, because there's a lot of skinny water and stuff like that, and if you don't know the lake extremely well, like a lot of y'all do if y'all fish there all the time, I understand that, that's going to be kind of all you're really going to need, so that's going to be the investment that you're going to need to make is get a good map on the front and a good map on the I mean on the console and a good map on the bow and you can probably do just fine with that and also those two units are going to have side imaging if you want them down imaging up front is what you really need or 2d up front and all that type of stuff it's going to be the package that you really need for fishing shallow all the time now if you're going to if your home lake has a lot of herring in it you know the fish kind of suspend a lot like they're doing the ozarks and stuff like that you're going to really need some of the forward facing sonar like the lawrence active target the new humbird mega live the garmin live scope all that type of stuff is really going to make you more efficient whenever those fish are not kind of sitting on anything in particular when they just kind of suspend on bait you can kind of stay with them you can scan around you can find exactly where the bait are sitting at all times that's going to make you more efficient so if you're just kind of randomly casting overstanding timber or stuff like that Basically, you're not going to throw to a fish all that often, but whenever you have that forward face of sonar, you're going to keep putting your bait in front of a fish over and over and over and over. So for that type of a, of a lake, you would definitely still need the mapping and stuff like that, but you would also need up front some kind of a forward facing sonar where you know you can kind of scan around, whether it be, like I said a while ago, the Mega Live, the Active Target, or the Live Scope. Any of those three, you can scan around and kind of find those fish that are in the middle of the water column. Now, there's obviously everybody can't just go out and pay all the kind of money for units like that and you can still catch them on every single lake even those ozark lakes whenever a lot of the fish are suspended over standing timber or suspended out under them big floating docks and you can really be more efficient with that forward face of sonar there's still going to be fish on the back side of those docks shallow there gonna be some on the wood there's gonna be some on the rock on the bank just doing random stuff there's always some fish that live shallow so do you have to have it no over the course of a year is it gonna make you catch more fish absolutely now if you now there's another situation 
where if you're fishing a lot of shallower cover, you're fishing a lot of areas where the fish really get on the bottom, you're fishing a lot of grass lines, and like in Florida, whenever there's shallower grass and stuff like that, the Humberd Mega 360, which kind of scans around, it'll show you everything that's kind of laying on bottom a whole lot better. So with the, with the Mega 360, you'll really be able to see if there's a log laying on bottom, whereas if you have one of the other types of forward face of sonar and you scan to it, it doesn't really pick up that stuff that's really laying on the bottom quite as efficiently. So you can see it if you really know what you're looking for, but that 360 really picks it up a whole lot better. So it's a lot of it. It's kind of a, a different time and place whenever you would need that. And whenever you have both of them, you can see the stuff on bottom and you can see the exact depth the fish are in. So it really goes both ways. So that's kind of the situations whenever you would need one instead of the other. And then it goes back to, is it a good investment? Well, you have to understand that if you're trying to do this as a career or you're trying to do it long term or you're trying to be competitive, you know, locally or something like that, you're going to learn so much faster and so much more efficiently. Having all those tools and all those units at your fingertips, you're going to be able to just kind of pick up little things from every single one of them and you're going to learn fish behavior. You're going to learn how your bait acts in the water, which is what was kind of a big surprise to me, is just exactly how your bait acts in the water. Whenever you move that bait, what does it actually look like? And you can really tell that whenever you have some of that forward-facing sonar. So if you want to invest in your career and further your learning and stuff like that, yeah, by all means, get as many units as you can possibly afford and learn how to use them and really try to put the time in and learn and see what all of that can teach you. Even on the bodies of water that you always fish, you can still learn more and you can become a better more efficient angler and figure out exactly what your bait looks like under the water. Now, if you're just going to stay local and fish four or five lakes, I would kind of pick and choose exactly which forward face of sonar that I needed. And if I was just going to fish once a month, you know, like some people do, they have to work a lot and stuff like that, and I understand that, maybe I wouldn't buy any of it. Like maybe I would just have a couple of maps on the front and the back of my boat and I would go have fun and, and fish shallow and stuff like that. So really, are electronics worth the money? That's up to you. That depends on how much money you're willing to invest, how much time you're willing to invest in your current progress as a person and as a fisherman and understanding the game that we all love so much better. So the reason that I bought all those units this year, like I said, bought all those units this year is because I'm still early in my career, I hope, on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And I felt like the learning, the expense monetarily was nothing in compared to how much I would learn throughout the next couple of years using all that stuff, I'll have such a better understanding of how fish acts, how my bait act, and how I can be more efficient on the water and stuff like that. So for me, an investment in myself, I felt like it was definitely worth it. For you, you have to make that call. I just kind of wanted to break it down and let y'all know kind of my thought process on the electronics. Obviously, there's a lot more to it as far as really understanding it, but you can dial it in, you can get good at it, and you can definitely learn a lot from it. So for you, you gotta make that decision. That's my take on our electronics worth the money. Just it all comes down to how much are you willing to invest to become a better angler. So hope y'all enjoyed that. Now, with all that being said, I'm about to go fish for a while with two untamed tackle jigs and no electronics. So you don't have to have it. We're just about to go beat the bank for a little while and we're probably gonna get some bites and we got a good chance of catching a big one also. So this is how I like to have fun. But for me, I did think it was a good investment. So, one thing that I did not mention. Sit back down. Sit back down. One thing, that's why Hunter is in the boat. One thing that I did not mention is power poles. That's one really big aspect of electronics on a boat. Power poles, for me and the style that I fish, I don't know how you can fish without them. I, I do know how you can fish without them. I did it for a long time. But for me, it makes it so much more efficient. I can hold my boat in place when I'm retying. I can flip into a grass mat, get a bite drop the power poles, I can re-rig, do everything I want to do, and not, you know, drift in or drift out or drift anything, and then have to hit the trolling motor again whenever I'm too close to those fish or whatever. And obviously, whenever you're bed fishing, you can power pole down, you can sit there for six hours if that's how long it takes you to get that fish to bite. So definitely power poles for me, it's kind of one of those things. Are you going to be fishing offshore all the time, and the only time you use the power poles is whenever you're launching your boat and you power pole down the dock? Like if you're on Lake of the Ozarks or Table Rock or something where you're always going to be fishing, where you can pretty much almost never power pole down, that's your only lake, maybe you don't need power poles. But if you're going to fish in a lake where, you know, you have to get up shallow, you're flipping, anything like that, I don't know how you can fish without them. So for me, they will be on every boat that I have for the rest of my life because I just don't know for my style of fishing how I could not use them. Now, another thing that I wanted to mention. And to shoot videos. It helps to shoot videos. You can power pole down. You, you can get the perfect lighting and you can shoot videos with the power poles down as long as you're in the shallow enough water. And uh, 
just know that if you got eight foot power poles and your graph says it's seven foot deep, that's about as far as you're gonna you're, you're gonna reach. And if you got ten foot power poles and your graph says nine foot, that's about as far as you're gonna reach. That's just that's just how it is. You know, they just whenever they go down, they can't get a strong enough stick. You know, like stuck in the bottom. Whenever you're deeper than that, and that's just you know, it doesn't bother me at all. That's just you know what it is. So those eight foot power poles six and a half seven feet or less they're going to hold you really really good the 10 foot ones nine eight and a half feet or less they're going to hold you really really well so the eight foot ones also fit in a parking deck the, 10 foot ones will the eight foot ones will fit in a parking deck the eight foot ones will fit in a lot of people's garage stuff like that so there's reasons why people pick one over the other but now another thing i want to get into was spot lock anchor lock you know the my my um motor guide has pinpoint all that type of stuff it all goes together with fishing offshore if you're going to be more of a slower kind of a you're gonna pull up on a point you're gonna fish it for 45 minutes you're gonna fish it for an hour whatever and you're gonna really kind of fan cast and drag around the spot lock the pinpoint everything that's gonna hold you in place that's gonna be a really big key for you if you're like me and you pull up offshore and you're scanning around constantly with forward facing sonar maybe you don't need spot lock quite as often as you might think because if you're trying to scan around you can't have your trolling motor locked into position so you have to be able to have that free flow and stuff so you can scan around with the forward face sonar so the more that I use forward face sonar the less I'm actually going to use my motor guide pinpoint so that's kind of just how it is for me that's another thing for you to decide what is your style of fishing because that's what all this is all these are tools that are available to you if they enhance and make you more efficient with your style of fishing so that's kind of the way that I look at it that's my approach to it I'm getting away from you know the pinpoint trolling motors a lot now I pretty much only use it when I'm retying, reeling in a fish, anything like that. So that's just my opinion on it. You know, let me know what y'all think in the comments. Do you have to have one? Do you have to have another one? Which one do you think's the best as far as brands goes or the 360 style or the scan style? Let me know what y'all think. I appreciate y'all watching. Let's go catch us a couple.